Hi, Peter Charles here for Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie a fly called Brad's Bat Brat. Say that fast. Brad's Brat. There we go. Got it out. It dates from 1937 and still got Stilgamish River in Washington State. And I think it's an attractive pattern combining orange, white, red, some gold. I think those colors look quite good, uh, especially on a, a dull day where you want a, a, a fly to show up to get a bit of a glow to it. So let's get started and look at the materials. Our hook is a size 2 salmon single. We're going to use black Vivas ADOT. We're going to be using Mylar uh, for the rib and the tag, and we're going to be using gold side up. The back third of the body is uni yarn fluorescent orange, and the front of the body is going to be uni yarn red. If you could find fluorescent red, I'd go with that. I just don't have any. The hackle is brown, and that's a saddle hackle. And the wing is a combination, and the tail, I should say, both the tail and the wing are a combination of yellow and orange bucktail. So, let's get tied. Okay, first our tag and rib. As usual, we want gold, so we're tying it silver side up. Just fold it back and lock it in place. There, that's available now for our rib. Now we go on for the tail. And I've stacked this ahead of time because it's supposed to be mixed. And the easiest way to get bucktail to mix, or any hair for that matter, is to put it in a stack or just bang it around for a while. So this one's already set to go. Now i got a long one in there. Get rid of any awkward looking ones because this tail is not going to be very big. Okay, there's our tail. I've gone and clipped that off. One of the alternatives, if I was doing a, a finer body, I would continue that all the way to the uh, return, so the body would be even. I don't have to do that this time because I'm building it out of yarn. Okay, now we're going to do the back third of the body out of orange yarn. So I take a wrap to the back, keep it tight while you're on the bump, and back it off. Make sure you're covering up any of the black. Now you notice it tapers down a little bit. I can go back and fill that taper up. There we go. Now that's more even. If you had just left that taper in, it would look a little odd when you would uh, go to work with your body. The rest of your body, you would have that section that would be tapering down and then you'd have to do something with it when you're working with the red. Okay, now for the red yarn. You notice how a yarn body allows us to take liberties with the, th the under wraps of the thread. I'm not being fussy. Now, come forward. I'll bring it up onto the return. Here we go. Come back. Now for our mylar rib, make sure you don't snag any of the, the tail. I'll put a wrap right at the back, then I'll come forward. Okay, let's stop for a minute and discuss a little problem I just ran into. 
my red is a little thinner than my orange, and the reason was I ran out of red. I cut off a chunk, I didn't cut off enough. So be generous with the yarn and don't try to scrimp and cut off too short a bit, you end up with what happened to me. But just something to, to think about. An alternative way, and I've done this in the past, is to put my yarn into a bobbin and just let it feed out of the bobbin, and that works too. You can do that if you want. I think for simplicity's sake and to keep things from knocking around, I'm cutting off bits of this, but if you weren't shooting a video, it wouldn't matter. So, you know, put this in a bobbin if you wanted to. Okay, now for a brown hackle, I'm gonna cut a tying in point. Cut that little triangle. Now, I'm not going to really overdress this with the hackle because I've got to leave room for my wing. And I'm putting in two kinds of material on my right wing. So, keep moving them back. Keep moving those barbs back. Now we tie in our white bucktail, and I've stacked this in advance, and we want our wing almost to the length of the tail, so measure it out and trim it off. When you're tr aiming for very neat heads, you want to trim off your bucktail ahead of time, or any of the hairs for that matter, and just gently pull it back. Some nice tight wraps to hold it. Now for the orange. Now, let me talk about quality of bucktail for a moment. This orange sucks. It's very crinkly. It doesn't stack very well, and when you tie it in, it flies all over the place. Unfortunately, it's one of those situations where I needed orange and it was the only uh, tail left on the rack, so I had to buy it. But when you're dealing buying uh, bucktail, you'll see the difference between the white is nice and straight and the orange has all that waviness to it. And it's just a, a nuisance to use when it's uh, got all that wave in it. And it just doesn't stack well. Uh, multiple problems with it. Uh, it. I think you could make a case that it might flow through the water, move better in the water, but, I mean, it causes its own set of tying problems. So, you know, I'll leave that up to you, whichever way you want to do it. But, you know, I'm not impressed with this particular tail. So it really does pay to sort through the bucktail in the store and get the stuff that's straight. I wouldn't normally be using this particular bucktail in a tying video if it wasn't for the fact it's the only one I have. And I haven't been able to find a better one at the store lately. Okay, let's get on to the head cement. Okay, there we have uh, Brad's uh, Brat, complete with crappy orange bucktail and half-decent white bucktail and, you know, a red body that could have been a bit thicker. But anyway, that gives you an idea what the thing is supposed to look like. I think it'd be quite an attractive pattern. Should work quite well uh, in days where you want something bright in the water to, uh, and there's enough complexity in that fly that it might be of interest to the fish. So give it a try, Brad's Brat. Cheers.